Hi students, this is chapter 12, Statement of Cash Flows. Now there's three major financial statements that are required for external reporting. An income statement, a balance sheet, and a statement of cash flows. And in this chapter, we're going to fo focus on the statement of cash flows. It highlights the major activities that impact cash um, and hence the overall cash balance. The statement of cash flows is a very valuable analytical tool for managers as well as for investors and creditors. It helps address questions such as, are the cash flows sufficient to support ongoing operations? Or why is there a difference between net income and net cash flow? Or can we pay our stockholders a dividend this quarter? Or are we able to pay off our debts? Um, or maybe even if the company will have to borrow money to make needed investments. All of these questions cannot be easily answered with the income statement or the balance sheet. So that's why um, for us as managerial accountants, the cash flows or the statement of cash flows is very important. Here's a look at the statement of cash flows and what we'll be working towards. Notice it starts with net income and adds and subtracts different items to get to the net increase and the ending balance of the cash account. So here we see some increases and then some decreases based on different items. The statement of cash flows, I think, is the most difficult to compile, but the easiest to understand once it's all put together. The way it will be put together, though, is based on the fundamental principle that the change in the cash balance must equal the changes in all other balance sheet accounts. As a refresher, assets have a normal debit balance. So the beginning balance plus all increases to that account less the decreases, which are credits, will get us our ending balance for assets. Now for contra assets, liabilities, and equity accounts, we know that they have a normal credit balance. So the beginning balance less debits plus the credits, because that's in addition to those accounts, equals our ending balance. And those equations are very um, helpful. Maybe you, you like to do it with a T account. You're, um, better with adding the, the increase decreases based on a T account, but these are the general premises of the equations we're going to work with. So some other key concepts to get out of the way. Uh, cash on the statement of cash flows doesn't mean strictly the green stuff. It can actually refer to cash equivalents like treasury bills or commercial paper or money market funds. All of these things are quickly converted to cash. Um, within a day or two, so we're, we're going to go ahead and put those into our statement of cash flows. Now this section is very important. We are going to organize the statement of cash flows into three categories. If you get nothing else out of this chapter, at least remember these categories here that we'll put our cash flows into. The first one is operating activities. And those are the normal day-to-day -day operations of the business related to making sales and paying for our expenses. The next one, investing activities, includes all of the acquisition or disposal of non-current assets. So if you remember from financial accounting, those non-current assets, those are those long-lived assets that last us more than a year, give us economic benefit more than a year. Um, and then lastly, we'll have our financing activities in its own category. And those are going to include borrowing from and repaying principal to creditors and transactions with stockholders' equity. Anything that's done to finance the business will be in the financing activities. We'll take a look at the items on this list. Operating activities are here, and they include things like collecting cash from customers, which is a cash inflow. Also, paying suppliers for inventory purchases, that's a cash outflow, paying bills, wages, taxes, are all cash outflows, but they're part of our operating activities. Then we have our investing activities. So here we see the buying of our PP&E, which is plant, uh, property plant equipment, 
Um, that's a cash outflow. Selling the PPE is a cash inflow. Buying stocks and bonds, you see those there too. And then the last thing is the financing activities. So that's going to be the, all those financing activities like borrowing money from a creditor, which is a cash inflow to us because we get the cash, or we're repaying the principal amount of a debt. So we're repaying our debt, which is a cash outflow. So there you see those three main categories we will put our cash flows into. And we're going to focus on what we call the indirect method in this class to compute the statement of cash flows, since it is required by GAAP. Um, but the direct method, which is also mentioned in your text, would give us the exact same amount of cash provided by operating financing and investing activities. So um, either way, we would get the same dollar amounts, uh, but we're just going to focus on the indirect method. So essentially, we are going to start with our net income. Uh, from the income statement and the first thing we're going to do is remove and subtract items to adjust to the cash basis so the first thing is the depreciation we're going to want to add that depreciation that we took out of our income back in so we can reconcile it to cash accumulated depreciation is a non-cash balance sheet account that shows the accumulated depreciation over time. We need to solve for the new depreciation this year by solving for the increases to that account or the credits. A little algebra will be required here. If we start with $300 with a beginning balance, we have an ending balance of $500 and we know we sold a piece of equipment that had some depreciation to it of seventy dollars then we can solve for the number of credits so here we have our beginning balance less the debits which was seventy we don't know what the credits are and we're solving for that our ending balance was five hundred so through algebra we solved that our credits were two hundred seventy dollars So we are going to add that $270 back into our net income, and we'll see that in a second. The next step is to analyze the net changes in the non-cash balance sheet account. So here you see accounts receivable, inventory, prepaid expenses, some current liabilities. All of those things are on our balance sheet. There's a good chance when you're working uh, post-college, so when you're out, we say, in the real world, um, and you're asked to do a statement of cash flows, you won't have these memorized, and that's okay. Even the best accountants have to reference how the changes affect the statement of cash flows, whether they're subtracted or added. So just be sure you know how to reference it and you're able to reference it correctly. In step three, we're going to adjust for the gains and losses from investing and financing activities. That's required for us uh, by GAAP and by the international standards that we're not really following here, um, but it's still useful to know. Um, but we're going to have to isolate those um, because we do need to have them removed from our net income. So here, too, we will find the change from the beginning to the ending balance on the accounts included here, PPE, long-term investments. We Down here, we have common stock retained earnings, all those things. We're going to find the change and add or subtract it back to our net income based on whether it was an increase or decrease over time. And here's where it gets really tricky. We need to not only find the change in balances, but we also need to isolate those gains or losses just mentioned. So even though our property, plant, and equipment account started with $1,000 and ended with $1,800 and had a sale here, but the original cost of the equipment was $100, we must also acknowledge the $40 of cash that came in. So we have a beginning balance of a thousand. We don't know our debits, but we know that a thousand, or I'm sorry, a hundred dollars came out from the cost of the original equipment. We can solve for the debits, which is our cash outflow, but we also need to report that cash of forty dollars that we received when we sold the equipment.
Okay, and here we see that we're solving for a change in our retained earnings. Our beginning balance is given, ending balance is given, and our net income is given. But here, when we solve for what's coming out in terms of debits, is $200, which means our dividends being paid. So we're reporting a net income, which is what we started with in our statement of cash flows. But not only that, we need to make sure we are including the $200 of dividends paid in our financing activity. This is a whole lot of information. You're wondering where all this information is coming from. So I'm going to pause here and let you know that there's some great concept summaries on page 568 in your text. This is actually a screenshot of what's in there. So um, here again, three different activities that we group our cash flows into. The direct method, we're not going to worry about that in this class, but basically we're starting with, for the indirect method, we are starting with our net income. We're going to add and subtract various adjustments based on the balances and how they change. And then that way we can actually get the net cash provided for and used by the operating activities. Again, this is on page 568. Um, we moved on to key concept three. We talked about that and how we added depreciation. Again, we analyzed the different changes and we adjusted for gains and losses. And then the investing activities, we talked about what goes in there. Long-term assets and financing activities, anything that goes into financing a business. So um, a lot of overview in these different um, summaries on page 568, but they're really good to reference. On that exact same page, 568 in your text, is the example for Apparel Inc. Now this video would be an hour long if I walked through every calculation with a statement of cash flow. So I'll leave it up to you to walk through pages 568 through 573 since it's very self-explanatory. Um, this is just a really broad overview on what the statement of cash flows is, but the actual computation will take a little bit of work. And actually the changes in account are already calculated from you for you from the beginning of the year to the end of the year in your, your textbook example. You're also going to notice in that problem that information such as the gain on the sale of plant property equipment, or in this case, sold a store they had originally cost and got some cash proceeds from it. Um, there's also going to be some changes with bonds and common stock. Dividend payments are given since that information may not be readily available from the financial statements alone. So here's all this information that your textbook example will give you. It's all something that you just need to put in your mind that is information that's needed for the statement of cash flows. And here's the statement of cash flows we looked at at the beginning of this video. This is what we're working towards. So again, if you can just kind of understand where these activities are coming from, where the dollar amounts are coming from that we're adding, here's our net income. The dollar amounts we're adding or subtracting back into our net income. I think you're going to be pretty well off with this statement of cash flows. But definitely look through that example in your text. Make sure you kind of stay aware of those different steps that are relevant to preparing it. And just a few end notes on this topic. Although the statement of cash flows is an incredibly useful tool, it needs to be evaluated in the context of a company's circumstances. So a well-established company cannot be compared to a startup as many startups have negative cash uh, or negative net cash by operating activities alone because they're startups, so they're spending a lot of money to get their feet on the ground. And also, useful information can be derived by examining the relationships among numbers, like if a large loan was financed due to some new machinery being procured with investing activities, you can kind of connect the dots, and that way you can um, get the information you need out of the statement of cash flows by the relationships among the numbers.